Hey guys, what's up? I'm back. Hi. <laughs> for those of you that don't know, I've been gone for a couple of weeks, just kind of dealing with some stuff. Not really super ready to talk about it right now, but I do really want to do something that makes me happy, which is hanging out in the kitchen with you guys and just doing some filming and enjoying, you know, some tasty foods. Probably cookies. I want to say thank you everyone for all of your sweet messages and DMs, emails, all of that stuff. Your support means so much to me and to my family. I truly don't know what I did to deserve all of you, but I'm very, really, I'm very, really happy you're here because I can't talk. I'm so, so grateful. And so, because I don't deal well with emotions, let's go on to today's video. I've had boxes of fun, different contraptions and things to test out for like weeks, just sitting here piling up, taunting me in my kitchen. Very excited to test them today. And I'm very excited that today's video is sponsored by a brand that I've been working with for a while now that I love, that I've been using a lot over the past couple of weeks, the past couple of years. And that is HelloFresh, which is a meal kit service. If you didn't already know, I have gotten so many people, so many people hooked on it now. Their meals are so good really, really easy to prepare because everything is pre-measured. All the ingredients are right there. And it just, you don't have to think about what you're making, which I feel like that's the worst part of making dinner. You have to think through all the planning, what ingredients do you need to buy, what do you have either in your cupboard or, you know, molding in your refrigerator, if, that's, if you're anything like me. The meals are phenomenal. They're so tasty and a variety of different ones to choose from. And also it's super flexible. Like obviously we do a lot of cooking and recipe trying here. So like we'll use it for one week and then skip another. So you can go to hellofresh.com and use the code rachelovs14 so you get 14 free meals and some free shipping, which is pretty great. I mean, you can't say no to free shipping, or at least I can't. So go and check out hellofresh.com. Use my code rachelovs14 for 14 free meals, free shipping. Let me know what you get. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what your favorite meal is. Let me know if you end up getting it and you enjoy it as much as I do. So big thanks to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video and just being, you know, like super flexible over, we've been playing this for a number of weeks now. And now let's dive into some Amazon gadget testing. And the first product we're gonna be testing out, technically I already have one, but did that stop me? No. And this product is so ridiculously popular. We loved it when we tried the first one and that is the guacamole keeper. But this one is the competitor. And I have it over here because I washed it. Oh. <laughs> ah. Everything's fine, everything's fine. I just thought I dropped a frying pan on the floor, it's fine. This is the guac lock. That is a great name. I already give them the name. The name is way better on this one. But I find guacamole goes bad so quickly for me regardless. And I saw a lot of you guys comment on the use of limes, which I typically use and I just forgot in the last recipe. But I tried lime. We tried when we tested the first version with putting saran like right up against the um, top layer of the guacamole. Tried a whole bunch of things and the guacamole keeper that we tried was fantastic. So I wanna try this one as well because it's also really, really highly rated. But I like it more, I don't know. Because the last one, they had like a rim around the outside. And if you don't catch the guacamole in there, like instantaneously, it like gums up and it's really, really hard to get out unless you have like an extra, like a tool type thing. It's super annoying. We need to make some guacamole first before we get too ahead of ourselves. The nice thing about this one of the other one is all of these pieces are all Take a part of all. That's not a word. So let's start with our guacamole, shall we? Look at our little tomatoes. Oh my gosh, don't get away from me. We grow cherry tomatoes on our deck in these like little like box things. And so this is like the first of the season. <laughs> this is like pre-season when you have four tomatoes and it's like the most exciting thing ever. Oh, Connor's gonna be so excited. He loves guacamole. It's among his favorite foods tied with everything else. He is currently wearing the clothes that uh, Luke was still wearing at two and a half, and Connor is 16 months old. Honestly, nobody needs to see me make guacamole. Let's just skip ahead. Ta-da, done. Also, I got a coffee with cold foam. So we have our beautiful guacamole right here. I have all the fixings in here, except cilantro. Ah, uh, oh no, no. I was thinking we grew cilantro outside, but we don't. So now we are going to scoop this into the little bowl. We gotta smooth it down, just like the other one. It's like icing, but avocados. I really want to try like avocado brownies and stuff. You know all those ones where they're like, I hid an entire garden in this plate of brownies and you wouldn't be able to tell. Like I want to test that. I just, I don't know what to call the video. <laughs> Let me know if you have any suggestions because I have no idea. What we're going to do now is make sure I'm doing this correctly. Yes. Okay. We're going to put the lid on top. Whoop. Maybe I should seal it first. 
Then take off this thing and then we're going to push it down the elevator until it gets to the top, I guess. There we go. Well, that was a lot easier than I expected. The only thing I dislike about this one versus the other one is in that one, I could kind of shift it around to get all of the air bubbles out and make sure everything was very smooth. This one, if you don't get it to look perfect along the bottom as well as the top, like it needs to be even layered throughout. Like, look at this. I've got like little pockets and stuff in here. Like, this isn't, no, I can't do this again. I was gonna say I need to do this again, but I have to actually take all of it out and reinsert it in the bottom. So now I'm gonna stick this in the fridge and we will check on it in a couple of days and we'll just see how everything is going. Bye guacamole, be delicious still. All right, so it has been in there for over a day. So let's open this up. I will say I do have one complaint about the top of this. And that is when you are using the little elevator thing to push up and remove any air bubble, any excess will come out the top here, which is super annoying. So this is what it looks like. I have opened it once yesterday to give some to Connor. So you can see what this looks like now. So it looks nice and green, which is good. And there isn't too much in there too, which I find is usually um, an issue because it gets browner faster. But I would say overall, this one is my favorite. All right, update. I just ate some of the guacamole with the kids. There's like a little bit left, not a ton, but I can't push up the thing anymore. So there's like a giant, can you guys see that? Like tons of air in there. Uh, the other one, at least I could I could shove it all the way to the edge. <laughs> oh, that's annoying. Okay, now onto a tiny device, and I won't hurt myself this time. And that is the palm. It's okay, I just dropped in the sink. The palm peeler. And this is supposed to be something that you hold like this, and you, you know, do it. So it's supposed to be a little easier, a little bit more ergonomic. You're not gonna, hopefully hurt yourself. And so I figured we would try it today on a potato and a half a cucumber. And this is important because I figured with like a whole cucumber, like you can just like do this and it'll probably work great. But it gets tricky when it's a smaller thing, right? So if I can hold it and do this and it's not like a big issue, then it might be more appealing. Haha, uh, unintentional puns. All right, starting with the cucumber because my children love this for snack. Oh, am I holding it wrong? There's no other way to hold it. Nope, definitely not that way. Oh, I don't like this at all. I'm gonna tell you why I don't like this. I need to show you this. See this and I'm holding it and I'm scraping along. Well, the blade is in the middle and it just, it feels uncomfortable that it's not like here and I can't, I don't know, it, I don't like that I can't see where the blade is. I much prefer, this is the one we use, this is by OXO. This one is fantastic and it, the blade stays really sharp for a super long period of time. I haven't had any issues with this. That way you can really see what you're doing. This, I was really excited about it, but I will hurt myself if I do this. Nope, don't buy it. Don't get sucked into it like I was. I am gonna try on the potato. Also the peel is like getting a little stuck. No, I hate it. Hate it forever. That is no. Now I wanna go on to one of the more interesting gadgets that we bought, which is a rotating pizza oven. Hear me out. This gadget is not only supposed to cook pizzas, whether fresh or frozen, but like a variety of different items. So you could do chicken fingers or egg rolls or like warm something up or even cookies was another option. So I thought it would be fun to kind of test out a frozen pizza versus a fresh pizza, maybe some chicken fingers and of course, Obviously, we're gonna test out cookies. Here it is. It's called the Pizza Pizzazz. Oh, sorry, Pizzazz Plus. Pizzazz Plus Pizza Rotating Oven. Presso. It also says Presso on it. So this, it looks like an iron. <laughs> when I see it on there, right? But basically, this has a whole bunch of settings on the top, so you can either have a lower oven on, the upper part on, or both of them together, depending on what you're cooking. This is also non-stick, which is key. You don't have to like spray it down or anything, apparently. And I feel like we should start with a classic. We'll start with the frozen pizza, we'll do the fresh pizza, and then we'll try all the other things and just see if it's worth it. Put it in on an angle, oh, uh, like that, and I think that sits on there. Very wobbly. It says if it's incorrectly, then it should rotate when you turn it on. Nope, is not on correctly. How about now? <gasps> hey, we did it. Also worth noting, which I thought was interesting, is that before you turn off your device, like when you're done cooking, you have to take the whole, like the tray off and let it run for like 60 seconds without the tray on before you can unplug it. 
I don't know why, but the, this was like bolded. Very important instructions. I also want to say that I really appreciate, first of all, they have the different types of pizza. So whether you have like a rising crust, stuffed crust, but also like name brand things. Like there's a whole one on bagel bites. Oh, s'mores. All right, so we need to get the frozen pizza. I have a rising crust pizza, but the rising crust I think will be interesting because I have to switch between the lower and the dual oven in order to like get it to do its thing, I guess. And then we'll do the fresh pizza. Never too much pizza on one day, that's what I say. So I'm gonna stick the pizza on here. <laughs> Barely fits. This is the most giant pizza I've ever seen. Okay, so we want this on lower first for 10 to 12 minutes. 10 to 12. So I guess it's doing its thing. I can't see if a lower oven is on. <laughs> just creeping down here, but I assume it's on. All right, Christopher, you uh, want to test some, some pizza? Look at this. Ta-da! What? Anytime you want. Yeah, come and, come and taste test. This is what the pizza looks like now. Did it rise? I feel like not. Do you see my iron pizza oven thing? Yeah, yeah. 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 Like, you know, novel, I guess? I mean, it's supposed to be more energy efficient. It's supposed to be able to cook not just pizza. Don't... Energy efficient? <laughs> That's what the people say. I found it to be very hot. That was the one thing that I noticed. Well, yeah, so, like I was looking at it, and, like all the heat is escaping sides. Yeah. How is that energy efficient? Is it quicker? I mean, it was 20 minutes. I think it's different for the, because we're doing a fresh one too. I think that one's a little bit quicker. Choppy choppy. Ooh. Ooh. Strip. Hot. Apologies. Molten lava cheese on me. Cooked on the bottom. Yeah, it seems crisp on the bottom. Yep. Squishy crust. The only thing I would say is that the cheese doesn't look as like bubbly as I was That's expecting. What I was thinking. Yeah, I like a little more singed pepperoni. I try not to burn my face. It's cooked. It's fully cooked. I would agree though. I want these to be a bit more crispy. Yeah. I have my beautiful refrigerated pizza this time, so we're gonna see how this one goes. This is harder to do with one hand. <laughs> There we go. Ta-da! Plug it in. Rotate. All right, now. <laughs> See you in 11 minutes. Ooh, bubbly cheese. It looks so good. It's so warm in here. All right, so it just dinged, and it's gone for, like, I want to say 13 minutes now. And so the top looks really good, but I just checked the bottom, and it's, like, pretty blonde. I can't do this with two hands. There we go, see that? So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do another couple of minutes um, with just the lower one on and see if that makes a difference. All right, this crust is looking a little bit better. I'm just letting it run for a little while and then we'll taste test, but like it looks good. All right, again, this is pizza, but I need to know how crispy it is. It's cooked all the way through, it's pizza. Yeah, good. I like it. So I have a variety of different types here. I have regular chocolate chip and then I have oatmeal chocolate chip. I guess that's it. That's Those are the only types I have. But still a varieta. And these were frozen. They are now much softer. They've been sitting out for 10, 15 minutes or so. So now I'm gonna cook them and I have a very specific way I'm supposed to cook them. So we have to do six minutes on upper and then four minutes on dual. In you go. And so this is 10 minutes total versus in the oven, just making sure that it was rotating, it is. The oven, or at least my oven, needs to like heat up for 10 minutes, sometimes 20 if it's really feeling aggressive and mean, and then another 12 minutes to actually cook the cookies. So this would be a lot faster of a way of cooking cookies, and you can also tell very easily which ones have been cooked and which haven't, which is also crucial. So let's check back when these are done and see if we have some like delicious, just, you know, chef kiss type cookies. All right, Christopher, look. I mean, not that one, but the other ones. You can't look at that one? No, this one's burnt. Pretend it's not there. But the other ones, though. Ooh. A little bit of crispness on the outside, not bad. But like a little chewy mm -hmm. on the inside. Cheers. Cheers. That was a good cookie. It is good. Yeah. I mean, it works. Mm -hmm. a little, is this, what is this, coconut? That's the other top two. Mm -hmm. But it does have coconut. This thing keeps like moving. Mm -hmm. It keeps like tipping. Well balanced. No, well balanced. I'll have to hold it like a tray. I guess my question is, is it so much better than an oven that it's worth having an extra appliance you have to store? Like the pizza was good, but an oven makes a good pizza too. This to me feels like a, um, it's this or a toaster oven. Toaster oven can do a lot more than this, no? 
I feel like this could do toast, but maybe you don't have an oven or you have a really small apartment. Maybe you store your clothes in the oven. I don't know. Not for everyone. But do, do you want to help me with the next one? It's also dessert. What is it? It is soft serve like with the Yonana. What'd you say about my Nana? <laughs> I said. So this device makes soft serve, but you can use all sorts of different fruits and stuff, but like primarily bananas, which I didn't know. I should have known from the name of it. Yes. <laughs> Don't call me out like that. Yonana but... makes so much soft serve. <laughs> I was like, cool. Oh, <laughs> Christopher, don't make your nap jokes. I'm gonna see myself. <laughs> no, no. I was just talking to you. You walk away. This is supposed to make not just frozen banana soft serve. But wait. But wait, there's more. And they say, like a lot of people are like, what if I don't like the taste of banana? Which, like, fair point. I don't always want to just eat banana flavored soft serve. Not my jam. Apparently, if you add a whole bunch of different fruits and things to it, you don't taste the banana at all. Is that actually the case? We'll find out. Are you tired of making soft serve like this? <laughs> and try Yo Nana. <laughs> Ask Yo Nana to make you soft serve. So the first one we're gonna make that one. is this one. Yep. Peaches, raspberries, bananas. The Yo Zone is seven to 10 minutes. This has probably been out for 11. Rude. Oh, well, that's why I'm scared. I don't want it to be ruined, so we have to hurry. All right. Your nana's aggressive. <laughs> Your nana's aggressive. She loud. <laughs> Why is she yelling at me? I'm just trying to make soft soap. Okay, so you have to turn it on. First of all, there's so many layers to mix it before it turns into goo, which it already kind of is. Oh, I see a little chunk of um, peach in there. Mm. I wanted to know how blended this would actually get. I mean, it's a cool idea. And if it doesn't taste like bananas, I would be more into it. Here we go. Well, that's terrible. Very chunky. A lot chunkier than I was expecting. Oh, that's gross. The, the seeds did not get. No, the seeds are there. It tastes like ice, but there was no ice. But like, I'm not eating that. No one should eat that. I think kids should eat that. It's chunky, that's gross. Let's try another one. I do have another option on my sleeve. We do need to clean this first though. Hold on. Okay, have the ingredients. And this is lemons, agave syrup, and basil. Could be refreshing. Let's turn this on again. And again, we have to do this in layers. Lemon and then basil, and then you're supposed to put the gave on last and kind of stir it in. Let's do a little mixy mix. It did not like that basil. Now I love lemons, so I should like this, but I'm a little scared now. Cheers. Cheers. Ooh. <laughs> ah, that was not enough. <laughs> What was that? It was like a whole lemon in concentrated form. Two more gallons. Yeah, uh, yeah. Who said that was refreshing? I want to know who you are, what your name is. That was the world's most sour object. I don't, I don't, I don't have words. <laughs> now it just looks like mashed potatoes. <laughs> yeah, it does. With some chives. <laughs> exactly, right? Nope. Palette cleanser? Maybe if you put coconut milk or something in it, like balance it. I feel like we always one more time. Like that is true. Like chocolate or vanilla. Or oh, I like did that. have one. Okay, hold on. It's just banana Oreo cookie. Banana Oreo cookie. Here we go. Okay, look, like a little bit more soft servey. I mean, it looks like cookies and cream ice cream. Oh, 100%. Yeah, no, it does. I mean, it's not as healthy. Like, this whole thing is supposed to be around like, healthy ice cream, but it's the best looking one so far. But this is healthier than cookies and cream ice cream. Perspective. <laughs> All right. That tastes like banana. Yeah. It just tastes like a frozen banana. I know that's exactly what it is. It's just, you hope for better. That is a pass for me. <laughs> you know what? This is good if you like bananas. If you're if, super into frozen bananas, then if yeah. If you love a good frozen banana, this is your jam. Uh, I would avoid it otherwise. It is not very tasty. 
and it is very difficult to yield a balanced dessert that is both creamy and also delicious. Keep eating it. You should stop. Yeah, stop eating it. Oh. No. But thanks I, for trying it with me though. Thanks for inviting me. I really me. appreciate it. <laughs> Tell me in the comments if you've tried any of these gadgets before, if you like them, if you don't like them, or if you've seen any others around that you think that we should try next. Leave them down below. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy these types of videos. And subscribe. Check out these videos on the side in case you've missed any. Thank you guys so much again for all of your love and support. And I will see you all in my next video. Love you all. Mwah.